Hi, my name is Matthew. Welcome to Artisans Interactive Game Dev. Today we're going to be making a basic enemy. So let's jump right in. Okay, so let's get started. Now, I've linked uh, this project uh, and assets that we'll be using for this project in the description box below. Um, otherwise, what we have done so far is we have a player with uh, platform behavior, we have our platforms that are solid, and we have a respawn point for our player. So, what we are going to do is we're going to create our enemy. So, right click on the screen, insert new object, we are going to select sprite and we are going to say enemy and insert. We'll get our crosshair where we can draw our enemy where we like. I'm going to click down here. This is a perfect opportunity for you to draw out your own in, uh, enemy. Um, feel free to here and do that. Or if you have downloaded the project, uh, in the project folder will be our enemy. So I'm going to select that, open, and there's our enemy. We'll check that collider. We got a nice round collider. This is a thing that we don't exactly want. We want to have our enemy just a nice box collider to keep it simple. So what we can do is we can drag these nodes um, out at each point. So, and we can probably just right click, make sure those nodes are out. So, if we press delete on our keyboard, when we have a node selected, then we can just remove that. Perfect! So we can close this down. And there's our enemy. Now currently if our player jumps down here and collides with our enemy, nothing will happen. So that is something we're going to rectify. And also our enemy is just going to sit there. Doesn't want to move. So in this we will get our enemy to move back and forth. And if our player collides with the enemy, it will destroy our player. Okay, so let's get started. So we are going to start with our enemy back and forth. So we need to have some sort of point here and here to say, hey, enemy, when you get to the edge of this platform, turn around and move the other direction. And when you get to the edge of this platform, turn around and move the other direction. So we need to have something that's going to tell the enemy back and forth. Um, and of course, if we duplicate our enemy around the place, we want to be able to do that with every enemy. So, these are our rally points. So we are going to create an object that is going to be that. Um, so if we can right click on screen. So, right click on screen, insert new object, we're going to choose a sprite, we're going to call this um, our enemy Any point. Insert. We can click down here. Now we're going to use these. And we're going to kind of leave them blank eventually. So we'll have it as a empty object for the time being. Um, and obviously we need to make sure that our collider is like this. Um, but these objects are huge. So we're going to resize this 
32. 32 by 32. There we go. If uh, you'd like, you can also fill it in with a color just so you can see what's going to happen. So once we're finished with this, I can press close. And there's our enemy point. I'm going to drag another one of these points down there. You see how they're invisible? So you're not going to see this uh, as you're playing the game, but they are there. Okay. So, uh, what? And if you do need to see them all again, you can click up the top here and they'll all be selected. So I'm going to click up the top here and we're going to add behaviors. Okay, so we're going to make sure that these um, <clears throat> these will be um, we might our player into the middle and then um, like oh first. there we go that in okay so add some behaviors to our player so click our player behavior and then we can plus symbol add a behavior we are going to tell our player that they're going to behave like a platformer we are currently kind of making a platformer and we will tell our player that they are solid to add solid and press close so when they collide with these they'll turn back and forth but we need to tell it to move um, there's also one thing that we need to tell the player uh, the enemy and that is which direction the enemy is moving that's either left or right and the way that we can do this is give it a variable that is related to itself and these variables are called instance variables so we are going to click on our player go up to our properties down to instance variable and then we'll go add and then we'll get this nice pop-up screen. There's nothing in it at the moment. We'll press plus. And we are calling this left. Uh, uh, move. Moving left. Or right. You can call it what you like. But uh, I find moving left or right is descriptive. Um, you can add a description to inform you of what this is doing. Uh, so we're going to say, um, I'm going to copy that. Moving left or right. Is the and moving left or right and we can use a uh, 1 or a 0 to define if they're moving left or right We'll leave it at zero and we're going to use a number. Um, and we will go through what the boolean and the text variable is at another video later down. So we'll press OK and there we go. So we have a moving left or right variable. Alright, so there's our player. We've got our rally points that we'll be moving back and forth between. Our player is solid and has this variable to our event sheet now. Now, in our event sheet, we only have a player uh, piece. This is the player respawning. The player is destroyed. 
we are going to create a group. And we want to create a group so that we can keep all the enemy stuff related to the enemy in one place. We are going to right click, add group. We're going to call our group enemy and press OK. Now that we have our group called enemies, we can add some behaviors and events. So we want to start with the moving back and forth event. So we need to tell our player to move in a direction first. So we're going to create a moving event. And we're going to be doing this movement every frame of the game. So we're going to be creating a big event. The way that we do that is right click on our enemy group, we're going to add, and then we're going to add a sub event. Once we've added our sub event, we can get this box and then we can choose our enemy. Oh, actually, no, we can choose system, my apologies. And once we have our system, we can right click. This will happen at every single frame of the game. Event tick. And then we can go done. So every frame we want the player to move in a direction. So we're going to go add an action. Go to our enemy. We're going to go next. And then we have a platform behavior attached to it. Simulate controls. We can go next. And then we can choose if the player is going to be, or the enemy is going to be left or right. Um, could make it jump multiple times. That would be funny. But uh, we're not going to do that. <laughs> so left is fine and done. Okay, so there's something that we have forgot. So let's see what's happened. We're going to press play. So, as that player just quickly starts again, watch what happens when I jump. Oh, the enemy also jumps. The good thing is the enemy was moving. But the enemies also jumped when I jumped. So when we add behaviors to our enemy, we want to make sure that it does not have uh, control, as in so that I can use my keyboard to control its movement. So the way that we do that is we'll jump back to our layout, click on our enemy, we'll go to its platformer behavior in the properties panel. We'll go down and there's a thing called default controls. We do not want to use the default controls, so we'll say no. Default controls is when the player is controlling the um, object. So we have done that, it moves left, it now is not controlled by the player. We need to add a another event. So, as you remember, we have these respawn um, these enemy points, so our enemy can bounce between them. We can turn around and tell our enemy, "Hey, when you collide with these points, I want you to turn the alternate direction." So. We'll right click on our enemy group, add event, add sub event, and then we can say enemy on collision with another. So we can type that up, or you can scroll down to the collision section. So on collision with another object, 
our other object that we're going to be colliding with will be our enemy point and done. So when our enemy collides with these points we are going to do something. So we're going to add an action, add action, enemy, because our enemy has a variable that's called moving left or right. The enemy and then we are going to check um, oh sorry on this uh, oh we need to do one more condition so very quickly we are we've collided with this point but we also need to do a secondary um, check because we need to find out the number that we're on for our rest of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my condition, my event, and make sure the whole thing is highlighted. I'm going to go down here, right click, and I'm going to go add, and I'm going to add an empty sub event. And then inside this sub-event, I'm going to be adding a condition. So right-click, add empty sub-event, add, and I'm going to add a condition. Add another condition. So the condition that we're going to be doing is going to our enemy, and we're going to compare the instance variable. So if you remember this was an instance variable, we're going to check what number it is. Now say, are you equal to zero? If it's equal to zero, then do one thing. Else, so we can write, uh, we can click on the entire thing, all things selected, add, and then down, add, else. So it's do this or this. Alright, so we're going to go into here and we are going to add an action, turn around to our enemy and we are going to set its variable. So if you are equal to zero, make it one and we're going to go done. And what we can do is we can copy this, we can go down to that else, we can paste, and then we can double click and change this to zero. So now, every time we collide with these points, we will click. To one to zero, which is great, but at the moment we need to also tell the player to move between one to zero as well. At the moment, we're just moving left, we don't have any switch. So now that we have made this lovely little checking system, we can actually. Click the top one, make sure the entire thing's selected, hold down the shift key, and click the second one. We can go right click, copy, and then we can go up to the top here on our tick event, and right click, and paste. So, under our tick event, we are doing same condition check. But what we're going to do is remove by clicking and pressing the delete key, clicking and pressing the delete key, and we can copy this, or cut this actually, cut it, go down to is moving equal to zero, and right click and paste 
and then we can go to the else statement and also right click paste okay so if we think about it our character starts on zero and it starts moving left all right so if it's zero we want to be moving left if it's else we want to be moving the so double click and right um so let's check that out We press the play button and there is our enemy moving left and right now if I jump down there our enemy will stop when we collide into it but it will continue to move left and right aggressively all right so what we'll do is now that our enemy is moving left and right we need to add a player event. So the player has a collision event. So now we made an enemy group. Enemy group. We're going to make one more group. We're going to go add group, and we're going to type player. So we can grab this by selecting it and clicking, holding, drag it down until you get that little line and that arrow, and there we go. We are going to now right click on our player group and go add sub event. And the event that we're adding is when the player is on collision. So type on and I just put the on collision with another. We are going to choose that and the other will be enemy and we'll press OK and we'll press done and we will destroy the player maybe in another video we'll um, uh, do health for the player if that's something you're interested in make sure you comment description box below we'll press done and we destroy the player. So, press play once again. There we go. Awesome. So, what you also can do uh, is go to your enemy, click on it, and adjust its maximum speed and the other little bits and pieces but there we go thank you very much thank you for watching please like comment and subscribe don't forget to ring that bell icon and i'll see you in the next video